Alright, so let us take one um, example of, uh, of what IoT can do in terms of logistics, uh, support for logistics um, particularly if you are looking at let us say cargo monitoring of uh, freight, freight monitoring essentially. Um, it can be uh, you know there now what is happening is uh, most items are being delivered to your foot step, uh, foot to your doorstep right. So, you do not have to set your foot out and uh, items arrive at your uh, doorstep itself which means lot of items are coming over cargo and uh, cargo shipments has uh, gone many many fold. And therefore, um, airlines particularly have to take care of um, um, what is it that is inside the package and if there is any tamper inside this package are there explosive for instance or is there material which should not be. Um, you know exported is, is it part of it. So, all kinds of problems with respect to the cargo itself okay, that is what is contents of the cargo itself that is one part. The other part indeed is the fact that people who have submitted their cargo customers end customers who have submitted their cargo are interested in keeping track of where their cargo is. Today most often cargo monitoring is limited to you know sticking a barcode on it and every time the uh, uh, cargo moves from one point to the other take a small package that you may have uh, uh, given for uh, uh, you know for sending it over let us say a courier uh, okay, which is also to be treated more like a cargo. You the courier company keeps track on where it is it has come to the airport or it has come to the office where it is in uh, transit at the moment it has reached the destination it has gone to the nearest. Uh, uh, sorting station and then it is out for delivery all those messages you keep seeing uh, at a discrete uh, points in time. But you really do not know where and how if you are interested in real time monitoring of your cargo. Supposing the content inside the cargo is uh, something that uh, you want to keep an eye on physically you want to keep an eye on there is no simple way. Now, IOT can uh, actually solve that problem for you you can uh, track your cargo in real time at any ins at uh, 24 bar 7 after submitting the cargo. Either you can do or at least the cargo company which has accepted your cargo can keep a track on it. Now, what kind of algorithms uh, would be required to keep tracking of this cargo? Well, that is I think what we should be worried about when we talk about a advanced IoT course. But before we go into that detail let us look at why is this whole uh, issue of cargo monitoring such a serious issue. I want you to see this report which was published uh, many several years ago. This was published in 2007 okay, and this report is actually called uh, CRS report for Congress. It was submitted it is uh, published in the US and um, there they talk about the air cargo system. Um, being a very complex and multifaceted network and uh, it is vulnerable to several security threats right. Um, they mention about all kinds of things that can get into the uh, into the cargo then there can be smuggling and theft, hijacking of the cargo and so many related uh, things. However, there is something called known shipper which you see here right. So, this known shipper um, is interesting this this part here you can see this I am trying to mark it with this pen here this part is the known shipper part okay. This known shipper procedural initiatives include industry wide consolidation of the known shipper program, increased cargo inspections, increased physical security of air cargo facilities, increased oversight of air cargo operations, uh, security training for cargo workers. Uh, stricter controls over access to uh, cargo aircraft and air cargo operations operations area. So, essentially the cargo uh, shipment becomes very simple for an end user if he goes through what is known as this known shipper program that is the airlines are looking for 
uh, those people whom they trust and known shippers are people whom they trust and if they have to be known shippers they have to follow certain procedures okay known shippers have to take the risk of ta accepting a cargo from end users and that they do it very very uh, rigorously they come to their customers premises and if they find something uh, not suitable and they inspect it in detail and uh, only then they will accept the cargo. Once the cargo is accepted by the known shipper then things are pretty straightforward. the airlines which is carrying the cargo just does not worry too much about it. However, there are uh, other rules I, mean, I just glossing over many things just to tell you that uh, there is a set there is a full area by itself and you have to get into real detail if you have to understand how actually cargo moves from the warehouse up to the uh, from the where I am just taking an airplane uh, scenario from the warehouse it goes to the cargo loading zone and then goes the inside the cargo at least 3 different places where you should be able to track the cargo to its uh, minute detail not just from tracking but also monitoring the cargo package of interest. So, if the cargo is being loaded into a cargo plane uh, there is some procedure to be followed and if the cargo is going along with passengers then there is another procedure that has to be followed. All those things you have to understand in detail uh, before you design any system therefore, in IOT you might have seen all through these uh, different modules that we did in this course you have to get into the details of the domain before you design um, any, uh, any module that you want to design or you want to come up with an algorithm you have to get into those detailing that is an absolute uh, important thing. That is why I am showing you uh, corresponding uh, literature which might help you to, uh, to you know start up and uh, have a look at, um, at, at documents like this which might help you to uh, design your systems. So, our focus in this module uh, this mini module is with respect to um, let us say tamper detection okay you want to do tamper uh, detection and uh, you want to ensure that your cargo somehow is uh, fully protected okay. Now, if you want to do that you have at least 2 options uh, at least 2 ways you can find more ways but at least 2 ways by which you can do uh, tamper uh, detection. One is you put several sensors uh, for detecting uh, uh, a tamper the like for instance if someone is um, you can even put a microphone for instance right very sensitive microphone small embedded system. So, that if the if there is a noise like a tearing kind of noise um, or a puncturing kind of noise that comes it picks that signal and then alerts uh, through some network that uh, uh, this cargo is, uh, is under attack okay. You can put a microphone there if it is not a microphone and you are not interested in picking up sound you may want to pick up uh, something with respect to touch right. Uh, so, you can have let us say touch detection and then say someone has touched the cargo and uh, the, so the, it could be typically like what uh, these capacitive sensors are right. So, you can have a capacitive sensor and there if you are touching that then it alerts and says that somebody has touched the cargo. So, tearing of a cargo one way of doing it the other way is to detect touch and touch sensitivities of these uh, systems that is another way of doing it. So, I can think of two maybe you have other ways um, third one could be that you wait until the cargo is torn the cargo is touched, but a flap is open. Once you open a flap maybe some proximity switch goes off and then um, quickly uh, you are able to alert people, but that is already too risky right even without opening the lid people may put a slit and then push whatever they want to and close it. So, that may be a little bit risky. So, maybe microphone based sensing or touch based sensings may, may, may be applicable, but of course all these are subject to um, let us say the scenario of interest if it is uh, if the item that you want to push inside or take out from that is pretty large you may making a slit is not going to help you have to open the flap and you have to replace things. So, uh, that obviously means that um, you could use a different type of uh, sensor. So, all this brings us to a uh, important thing is how do I design this whole IOT system uh, which will allow us to uh, sort of you know keep track of monitor the cargo in real time and look at tamper um, of this uh, type of cargo. So, you can see that um, this is the motivation really this paper 
this uh, little uh, survey that report which was submitted is indeed the motivation and there are uh, numbers which tell you how uh, cargo shipments are going to go up and how they are going to earn revenue uh, for um, uh, predictions on how what kind of revenue you are likely to uh, see. Uh, you can see that um, revenue per uh, revenue ton miles um, over the year x axis is the year and um, y axis is this revenue ton miles and you can see that 2016-17 uh, forecasts are pretty pretty just going up all the time from to, from 99 to 2016 has been going up all cargo all cargo domestic passenger cargo and passenger cargo international everything seem to be rising right passenger cargo has gone up and so does all other uh, cargo which seem to be going up. So, um, this is an interesting statement which I thought I will bring it to your notice that in 2002 it was reported that TSA computer models estimated that if full physical screening is implemented only 4 percent of daily volume of freight at airports could be processed due to uh, the time that would be required to break down shipments inspect them and reassemble them for transport. So, if you really go into great nitty gritty details of each and every piece of cargo it is not going to work you can only push 4 percent of the overall cargo it is a abysmally small number somewhere you need to put the trust ok this known shipper as I was telling you is important right. Um, so, the known shipper has to take care of several things only then these numbers can scale up if you really want to do it uh, from the uh, uh, TSA com uh, computer systems models uh, perspective um, then <laughs> it is only going to be uh, uh, just 4 percent of the volume of uh, freight. So, you can see that you need solutions right so otherwise it is not going to work. So, I would uh, strongly recommend you to download this uh, document and really motivate yourself on why this is an important uh, problem distribution of air cargo revenue ton miles by type of operation is also here all cargo 32 percent passenger international 22 percent passenger domestic 12 percent and um, all cargo domestic is 34 percent that is from the year 99 to year 2005 how it has gone up how what is the distribution of uh, the complete uh, cargo movement right in during this period. Um, so, you can see air cargo security risks, risks are there explosives and other kind of uh, devices then um, there are hazardous materials which can be an issue cargo crime is a problem then uh, you have aircraft hijacking and sabotage which is also a very uh, uh, important thing. So, you have to do proper cargo spe screening and inspection only then you can actually let the cargo. Um, on to the flight. So, this is the most uh, critical part ok. So, what is the system that we have in mind and uh, how do we design this system um, is the question really. So, I will want you to go and read this document. So, I would not go into the detail, but of course, you it is available for download you can simply download this and read this document in detail and get you a very good feel of what is the problem on hand and what is it that we want to solve and what are the new issues that have come up because this is published was published more than 10 years ago what are the new issues and how does one look at this this uh, huge uh, market segment of logistics right and how can IOT help in this logistics uh, area ok. So, essentially this is that module on logistics essentially ok when I have taken cargo particularly air cargo as a application case for us to understand in detail. All right, so that uh, so I leave it uh, at that and leave you with thoughts that there are very strong motivation why you want to monitor cargo, right? So at least to that extent, the need establishment is in place now. Now, um, so let's go back to this uh, document and look at quickly what are all the possible uh, art of uh, you know this uh, technologies for monitoring and tracking in any supply chain management barcodes I mentioned to you RFID is another possibility magnetic strip then optical character recognition biometric voice and video systems are also something that can be used for um, many of these um, uh, you know monitoring and tracking applications including cargo systems. 
So, whenever cargo comes at the airport at I mentioned to you three parts right a warehouse, cargo loading zone and an aeroplane. So, cargo is stationed here before it is loaded into the plane and then cargo loading zone essentially is um, all cargo carried in the airplane have to be methodically loaded to the planes for transit and then inside the aeroplane you put it, you put it inside the uh, aeroplane. So, our uh, proposed solution that uh, thing that I am looking up is that we need to build a surveillance IOT based surveillance system which uh, sort of monitors this cargo means that you need a surveillance camera and this uh, surveillance camera is both day and night camera and uh, then you will need the necessary sensors like uh, uh, light sensors to just uh, see what is the ambient light at the moment then you need uh, movement right if you want to protect your cargo uh, you have to ensure that nobody comes close to the cargo. So, you need movement uh, detection thermal sensors uh, human thermal radiations which I did in the previous uh, design for IOT course you can look up some modules there where uh, thermal uh, uh, sensors can be used very cheap ones you can use 8 cross 8 thermal sensor or you can use even 4 cross 4 uh, thermal sensors and these can actually detect human beings at some close distance. So, you are interested in protecting your cargo monitoring your cargo and ensuring that nobody comes close to the cargo. So, you can use PIR as a possible uh, detection then you can use thermal sensors and you need to detect light uh, what is the current lighting condition that is there uh, around the cargo. So, that if you have to do IR and you have to move from black and white to color and all that you will need to uh, enable. Um, based on the light conditions right because uh, in, in uh, most cameras in the night when the lux falls down 0 0.001 lux and all that you would not be able to get color images right you will only get black and white images. So, the cameras are intelligent to switch over to get you the night pictures by making it black and white. So, all these uh, uh, things have to be incorporated into your solution most often high end cameras actually have these uh, facilities. But if you are doing it during the day then you are interested in color images and then you have to do um, the uh, uh, you want to uh, get a you want to look at <coughs> the uh, separation criteria that you want to use for establishing the region of interest. When you take a camera picture and then you have a full uh, picture of uh, the system cargo is only perhaps occupying not all pixels it is just occupying one part of the image and therefore, you are interested in just the region of interest and therefore, you could look at color for instance use color as an important uh, signature the image is first transformed into some sort of HSV plane. So, you are already building your system to use color and based on the range of hues uh, we decide on we decided based on the color to be separated a mask of the colored region is created. So, you can do color um, as something that um, so this pro you see status complete is something that is internal to us we have been working on it. So, we have completed this color based uh, uh, you know using different uh, technologies like color as one of them depth we are still working on it, but we have made some good progress on it. And, um, where there is uh, depth essentially means when there is no distinct color difference between our object of interest and the surrounding a special depth sensing camera can be uh, employed. These cameras work using IR light and hence are less susceptible to luminosity changes. These cameras provide information of distance of the object from the camera and therefore, you can use these depth uh, sensors and they will tell you how far uh, these objects are right. So, the problem is if color merges um, if color cannot be used as a nice feature for separating out the region of interest then you may want to use depth as well alright. So, then motion when a part of the image is moving then the region of the moving pixels can be identified by background subtraction techniques something that is quite well known in the image processing world. Shape is another thing you can establish shape of an object by image segmentation and then um, so, many things are possible. So, you have to look at what are all the possible signatures that you want to extract for, for, for your cargo. I will show you some pictures maybe that will help you. 
Um, so then what is very important is after the, the uh, so you make some assumptions about the following if you want to design your system you need those assumptions to be stated up front correctly. So one of the things is that cargo colour is something that we want to fix okay. The cargo is brown coloured cuboidal shaped objects placed in the centre of a room or somewhere some place where you know you want to start tracking monitoring from that point. And then um, the full length of the person is visible in the frame if there is a human you are not just looking at part of the human the camera is far enough to look at the object of interest which is our cargo which is brown in colour and uh, humans around can be detected in full not just a portion of it. And uh, then there are other objects which can be around the cargo that is not a problem. Then the cargo region of frame uh, is monitored using uh, several techniques. So these are the two most important uh, techniques that uh, you may want to concentrate on. I want to emphasize this because you should try okay. I can only tell you what to look for and what kind of techniques you can apply. Here there are two techniques and I have pointed you to both of them which we completed we have tried out a little bit and we are quite confident that they are good. One is Huff transform please recall Huff transform you did it in the module related to the automotive world. Now it is back again Huff transform for strap detection. You take a piece of cargo and there are two straps which are used for tying the cargo look at angle deviation of the strap for that you have to do half line and then identify the angle deviation of the strap. So original angle and how much is the angle of the strap uh, deviated that also you should be able to uh, detect. So these are so you will need half line then you need surf this is very important it is called speeded up. Uh, robust uh, features uh, detection technique with some sort of uh, some probabilistic analysis these are interest points essentially of the cargo. So you have to extract the interest points which an from an image of the region of interest from the region of interest which is our cargo you get the points of interest please look up open CV description for surf I cannot get into the detail but you can use this technique of uh, surf detection technique for the purposes of uh, cargo monitoring very very important. Then you need a network once you detect that there is a tamper you need a network and uh, you need certain bandwidth from the network and then you have to transmit it and all that. So that is not at all very important um, but we will just focus on essentially leaving it at the fact that you do tamper detection right. Uh, communication of a tamper is another story that uh, say something that has been uh, that has been touched or that has been torn or you put a, as I said several sensors you can imagine also in that uh, scenario. So look at warehouse this is where all the cargo has been brought and stored and uh, they are all stored within a room you have to do the region of interest uh, exactly there and um, you will have to look at cargos which are kept within the room designing an algorithm is relatively easier compared to two other ca other cases as there will not be any sudden changes in light intensity variations without any human interruption. The reason is a warehouse is well lit it is uniform it is indoor therefore uh, light intensity variations uh, are not going to bother you so much and um, it is going to be quite a benign environment for you to do any kind of uh, testing typically you will get 0 to 700 lux if you are looking at uh, the indoor environment but look at cargo loading zone this is where it is an outdoor and uh, uh, the camera is stationary but cargo can be in motion and uh, coming to lighting conditions this is outdoor there can be huge variation variance right of lux if it is outdoor during uh, peak uh, summer uh, I mean sun at uh, noon during summer it can also be 2 lakh lux 1 lakh 2 lakh lux and all that down to if there is a small cloud cover it can be down to 25,000 lux okay. So it can really vary within seconds it can go from 2 lakhs to 25,000 and uh, it can uh, 10,000 and so on and so forth. So really the variance uh, the lighting conditions is uh, the variance of these lighting condition is so quite large. So it is hard for you you have to keep detecting it uh, carefully uh, you cannot build systems uh, solutions for this but indeed that is the hard problem right 
aeroplane it is inside uh, the you assume that the cargo is loaded inside the plane and the, there is a camera kept very close to the airplane and the plane is parked at the gate and uh, the lighting conditions are the same as that of uh, similar to that of a warehouse. Uh, light inside the plane there would not be much variance in the lux um, so that should be uh, no problem at all for you alright. So there are other things which may not be of interest in this document. Now I will show you a set of slides by which one can actually do, um, uh, do this air cargo monitoring uh, detection ok. So let me show you that this is work done by a few of our uh, uh, colleagues and uh, students in the lab as you can see their names here um, Ratna Namala Vijay then Harshpal Singh, Vinod Hegde, Pawan and so many others have worked on this project. Uh, basically a tamper detection system. Here is a problem statement you have to pose similar problems uh, problem statement to yourself if you really want to provide uh, some sort of solution. Uh, the cargo is stationed uh, 4 to 12 hours in various places at the airport terminal and the airline industry reports uh, loss we know this very well. See this picture ok you have the storage area ok and um, yeah sorry you have the storage area you have the pallet built up area then you have the cargo loading zone and you have inside the aircraft. Pallet built up is you not take one cargo but you take a set of cargo boxes and make it into a, a pallet and, um, and then you may be now monitoring just <coughs> your part of the cargo which is part of the pallet or you may be monitoring the full pallet that is also possible right both you have to again look at what that scenario is. <coughs> now what is the IOT solution? The IOT solution is to detect dislocation of uh, strap by a certain angle and uh, if there is a net around the cargo you should be able to <coughs> easily identify the cargo net removal or displacement ok and communication has to be very good has to be reliable. You can use power line communication if there is um, sufficient um, you know power points plug points for you. You can combine it with Wi-Fi and then use a Wi-Fi PLC hybrid network to carry this data. All right, how do you do it that is the next uh, question um, you see here that um, what they normally do is they so we have to do it this way you get the first video frame do background subtraction uh, essentially you use this mixture of Gaussians based uh, subtraction then use this uh, YOLO framework object detection in real time right. We discussed this last time so use this YOLO object detection if it is cargo with net you do it in one way if it is cargo without net you do it in another way. So you can see to the right is cargo without net if it is without net detect parallel straps simply do half line transform and look for strap integrity and uh, if there is it uh, the, uh, the strap integrity is, uh, um, is, is disturbed then you will have to flag an alarm and uh, then move on from there right look at that with cargo with the net the, this is that is this part here you look at net integrity uh, but now you do not do uh, half trans half line transform because it is not a cargo uh, without a net it is with net. So you now do what is known as HOG uh, this is called uh, uh, histogram of gradients feature comparison S and then you flag an alarm if the answer is no then there is no problem at all um, if the the, um, um, uh, the net integrity feature comparison is uh, you know if it is um, if it uh, gives you beyond a threshold then you have to flag the alarm otherwise you simply go on checking um, in a loop. So this essentially means that um, there is a feature comparison is going fine you keep going back in this loop. Um, but if it is in the feature comparison says that there is a difference then you uh, flag an alarm right. Same thing this alarm would again come back from strap integrity <coughs> if there is a no then you come back here integrity is gone that means essentially 
if it is yes there is no problem but if it is no again it come back to this alarm flag and this alarm flag is the one that will actually take and then uh, we have to uh, communicate uh, soon as there is a, a tamper thank you.